Well, thank you. So it's my great pleasure to present our today's speaker, Professor Simakov, and the title of the talk will be Multiscale Modeling of the Cardiovascular System. And thank you very much for agreeing uh, to participate as a speaker, and please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'd like to give a talk today um, about um, multiscale modeling uh, of blood flow in different parts of the uh, cardiovascular system uh, of the human organism with uh, some cardiovascular pathologies. So, um, uh, despite of many reasons, cardiovascular disease are uh, still uh, the main reasons of mortality and disability in the world. And uh, in uh, real, in practical uh, clinical applications, uh, it is very important to perform analysis of blood flow uh, in the presence of different uh, cardiovascular pathologies uh, and uh, to make a prognosis after some treatment, maybe surgical treatment, or maybe the medical doctor uh, need uh, some supporting decision uh, to do or not to do uh, the surgery. Uh, so, uh, somehow we should predict for some specific patient based on his specific uh, parameters, um, some uh, prognosis of the blood flow. And uh, some uh, modern detailed models, I mean uh, 3D models and fluid structure interaction 3D models, uh, of course, um, give us uh, very detailed information about uh, blood flow in uh, many situations. But uh, unfortunately, they uh, only uh, applicable to some uh, limited portion uh, of a single vessel or maybe two or three uh, large vessels. And uh, it is uh, extremely difficult to use these models in practice, in clinical practice. So um, uh, I uh, present a multi scale approach uh, which uh, decreases the uh, uh, a spatial dimension or sometimes time dimension to also uh, and uh, present uh, some uh, results of uh, com developed computational tools for modern hemodynamics uh, in the cardiovascular system with pathologies. So this uh, approach and the tools are de have been developed and uh, all models uh, are based on physical principles and uh, they uh, are tuned uh, with uh, uh, the data, which uh, most of the data are available in uh, regular clinical practice in uh, regular medical centers. So, uh, it, uh, uh, so uh, we have to decrease the complexity of the models uh, in so that it is possible uh, to use uh, real uh, regular clinical data and of course produce some results and uh, I will present some uh, results of some, some applications. So uh, what we have, we can uh, talk about uh, some biological fluids, not necessarily blood, it may be also lymphatic flows or maybe um, air flow in the respiratory system, uh, which uh, can be considered, uh, <coughs> which can be considered as a, a flow of uh, uh, viscous um, fluid in uh, some um, elastic uh, tubes, in the network of elastic tubes, and in some uh, point-like structures uh, like uh, aneurysms, like uh, lymphatic nodes, like uh, heart chambers, maybe, or alveolus. So, uh, these uh, parts can be considered as a uh, one-dimensional uh, elastic tubes network and uh, some uh, lumpy parameters um, concentrated um, uh, elastic region without spatial dimension, only with the dynamics or even without dynamics sometimes. So um, if we uh, consider only an um, uh, arterial network, um, well, vascular network, sorry, so we uh, will see the large arteries such as aorta and carotid uh, arteries and some, something like this, and uh, where the flow is substantially uh, three-dimensional and we of course need uh, three-dimensional dynamic models uh, based on the stock equations coupled with uh, some uh, structure uh, equations for elastic part with its uh, fluid structure interaction models for detailed description of the flow in uh, such regions. 
but in many situations uh, we need uh, information about we, we have to analyze the flow in some uh, distant vessels uh, which uh, the lens uh, have the lens much more uh, than uh, their diameters and uh, we uh, may use this information to reduce um, the dimension of the model and um, write a one-dimensional uh, so dynamic model with, with a time and one uh, spatial coordinate uh, to, um, uh, to describe the flow in there. And uh, also we have uh, some uh, regions like uh, hot chambers, uh, succulent rhythms and so uh, point like uh, structures and uh, we then uh, can decrease the dimension of the 1d model to 0d model so we don't have a special coordinate but only dynamical change of the parameters in time and uh, also we have some uh, very small vessels and uh, a network of a um, huge amount of very very small vessels uh, which are called microcirculation uh, where uh, the flow uh, actually as uh, steady and uh, we also don't need at the time we just need some algebraic uh, non-linear algebraic uh, relationship between the hydrodynamic parameters but uh, sometimes we need this region themselves so we, we may want to analyze flow uh, in microcirculation or we use these regions as uh, boundary conditions between the arterial and venous parts so uh, I mostly will talk about these three uh, types of models, 1D dynamic, 0D dynamic, and 0D steady models. And uh, I will show uh, some uh, consistent uh, view of all these um, uh, models in a one, uh, uh, one approach, uh, where one model follows from uh, the previous, uh, previous one. So, um, Let's uh, consider some portion of a uh, uh, vessel and uh, we will perform an average uh, of some uh, small uh, portion uh, of this vessel. And uh, initially, uh, we will have Navier Stokes equation in this form and then uh, accepting some uh, assumptions. Uh, some of them are as follows. So we uh, will fix the uh, shape of the profile so we uh, uh, will uh, consider uh, that uh, we have some uh, average cross-section velocity and we have some uh, function uh, which uh, produce some uh, mapping between the average flow and uh, the uh, 3d profile in this cross-section so uh, actually the shape of this profile is considered constant and uh, it may be a parabolic like profile or almost flat profile and which uh, depends on this uh, parameterized uh, function and uh, also uh, we uh, uh, we have to assume that uh, the molecules of blood near the wall uh, vascular wall are moved with this wall with the velocity of the surface of uh, limited uh, boundary and uh, making a variation of these equations uh, I prefer not to give details they are uh, published in many uh, works uh, normally we have these two equations representing mass and momentum uh, conservation equations uh, in a, a so-called one-dimensional form um, but um, this so these equations uh, describe the flow in a one uh, vessel and may be uh, constructed to a set of equations for the vascular network. Uh, but uh, this uh, set is not hyperbolic. So the first equation is hyperbolic and the second not in, in, in general. So, uh, uh, but uh, it may be convenient if we will have this uh, set in a hyperbolic form so we can uh, use a lot of uh, various methods uh, for hyperbolic equations and uh, they are quite effective and uh, establish a very effective numerical um, algorithm uh, for computations so uh, if we uh, assume that the flow is a um, product of cross-section uh, and the average uh, linear velocity and substitute to the second uh, equation here we will uh, have this one this red equation so the first is the same mass conservation and the momentum conservation 
uh, will uh, look like like a red equation. And uh, what next? Uh, so uh, actually, we have uh, here pressure, and uh, we uh, relate the pressure and the cross section uh, with the material properties of the vascular wall. So actually, this is the uh, elasticity law, and uh, experimentally and clinically. Uh, it was shown that uh, this function is monotonic, um, so uh, the uh, derivative of this function by the cross-section uh, almost always positive, and uh, we can uh, reverse uh, uh, this uh, function to the f-hat uh, function, it also uh, will be monotone. And then uh, we can uh, rewrite this thread uh, momentum conservation equation in this form where we have this parameter epsilon. Uh, so where epsilon uh, can be uh, written in uh, this form if we uh, take uh, exponent um, approximation, exponential approximation of the F function and uh, compute the derivative and substitute uh, to the momentum conservation equation. So uh, here we have uh, several uh, ratios, uh, and um, from uh, uh, the equation derivation, the alpha parameter is uh, less than uh, four by three for, for third, and more than one. So this is this uh, is less than one. Then a rho is the density of the blood, and rho w is the density of the a material of the vascular wall. Of course, uh, the density of the blood less than uh, the density, it's obvious and uh, it's sufficient for, for us. Then uh, S sub zero is some uh, cross section uh, which we use uh, as, as the minimal cross section of the vessel. So uh, S sub zero to S uh, always less than one. And uh, C uh, sub zero is the uh, uh, velocity of the small disturbance propagation in the vascular wall. So it's uh, quite um, uh, much, much more than uh, U, which is the linear velocity of the blood. So the peak uh, velocity of the average velocity in the aorta is uh, half of meter per second. Uh, and then uh, this squared parameter is very small. And of course, this uh, product is also always less than one. And uh, so we have that this uh, parameter epsilon is very small uh, everywhere uh, for arteries. It's not necessarily small for uh, some veins, but I will not consider this case in, in my talk today. But in all arteries, uh, this, um, this is valid, it's very small. And uh, we can rewrite the second equation in this uh, hyperbolic form. So this is a condition. So uh, actually for all atros, we can use uh, some hyperbolic set instead of this not hyperbolic set. For when some, sometimes here, yes, sometimes no, it depends on the type of the way and uh, the type of the elasticity uh, function. So uh, we can uh, write this uh, set uh, in this vector form, where we have two variables, cross section and uh, average uh, linear velocity, with the flux term in, in uh, this form. And uh, uh, this set uh, can be solved by some uh, uh, well known uh, numerical scheme. So uh, I use this um, conservative double step uh, scheme proposed by. Uh, Magomed van Hoed up in the book, uh, Good Characteristic Numerical Methods. And uh, for uh, gamma equals zero, uh, this scheme had the second order uh, approximation. And if gamma equals one, then it has the first order, but it's monotonic. But uh, for the blood flow, it's not very important because we don't have some, uh, some like uh, shock waves. So uh, it's not need to, to use uh, the first order scheme. Sure. And um, we uh, just have a model for the internal uh, points uh, of one single vessel. But uh, we have to uh, construct uh, the set for the network of the vessels. And uh, let's see what situations we have um, in a vascular network. 
So we have some uh, connections of some bifurcations of large vessels such as aorta and carotid arteries, where we have a very complex uh, flow. Um, we also have some uh, medium or small vessels like coronary vessels, maybe some cerebral vessels or some arteries in the legs and hands. Uh, and also we have some veins where we have very, very uh, quiet flow with the lower nodes numbers. Uh, so uh, different approaches are used to construct these boundary conditions. Most of them uh, use the following. So we use the mass conservation condition in this form. So it means that uh, total flux uh, in every uh, junction uh, of the vessels is zero. Uh, epsilon is just the orientation parameter. Uh, we have compatibility conditions along outgoing characteristics uh, of the hyperbolic equations uh, in every vessel in the junction. So actually, we always have only one uh, characteristics going into the domain and one out of the domain. Um, and uh, the third group of um, boundary conditions uh, generally uh, assumed uh, from these uh, three types of the conditions. So it maybe uh, Bernoulli uh, uh, conservation uh, condition, it may be arteriovenous uh, or maybe some other vessel pressure drop conditions, quasi-like condition, and uh, for possible alternative for the lower nodes numbers, we just may neglect the difference of the kinetic energy in the junction and just um, consider the quality of the pressures uh, between the terminal points of the vessels and uh, the junction point. Um, but uh, all these uh, types of the boundary conditions are very, uh, very popular today, uh, but all of them uh, have some problems. So what problems they have? So if we uh, Imagine uh, these uh, three situations. So we have some uh, some single vessel, and it uh, the same vessel, but with some uh, junction point, and uh, the same vessel with junction point, and some uh, very small vessels uh, attached to this point, to this junction. So uh, normally uh, we would uh, have um, a solution which is very similar to the solution in uh, one single vessel. Uh, none of these uh, boundary conditions um, can produce uh, such a result, uh, surprisingly. So um, the new boundary conditions uh, are required, and I uh, propose the following approach. So if we consider the junction point as a small portion of a one-dimensional uh, model of the vessel, so we uh, decrease uh, the length to some uh, typical uh, length uh, of uh, the bifurcation, for example, as a connection. And uh, we consider the volume of this uh, portion as a, a length times some average per section. Uh, then uh, we can uh, rewrite um, the mass one dimensional equations, one dimensional. Uh, to this form, mass, mass conservation and uh, momentum conservation. And uh, so uh, we have uh, here the change of the volume, so we consider this as elastic volume. So previously in this uh, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, uh, we consider it like uh, some rigid uh, region and this is a problem actually. Here we can see the elasticity and we write this, um, we, we can see the change of the volume of this junction point and uh, the change of the moment. So here uh, we should, um, uh, so these parameters I, R, uh, I will show uh, them, the, them later, they uh, depend on the parameters of the, of the vessel. And uh, we uh, have here two pressures, uh, so it's like a pressure gradient, but we have here uh, several uh, points uh, where we have different may have different pressures, so it's um, uh, uh, not very clear how to define this uh, pressure. So internal pressure is the uh, pressure due to the elasticity of the uh, junction region, and its elasticity uh, should be combined uh, from uh, the elasticity laws of uh, the connecting uh, vessels. And uh, P external, uh, it's 
uh, I can consider it like a um, average pressure uh, of all uh, connected vessels. So this uh, pressure gradient uh, works well uh, for uh, the considered test cases. So here we define them like this. So uh, the, here L is a, a some um, uh, some degree, some positive number, and it was set to equal to five. And uh, so it means that uh, the largest vessel uh, makes uh, more impact uh, to the properties of the uh, junction point. Uh, so uh, let's consider uh, two um, test cases. So first we consider some uh, vessel and we consider this vessel uh, and uh, a junction point in the middle of this vessel. And uh, compare uh, the uh, difference of the pressure. Uh, so this is absolute error or absolute difference between uh, the two models. Uh, first, it's a new model uh, of the boundary condition, and the second model is the Bernoulli uh, integ integral uh, based model. And the third model, uh, the pressure uh, where we equal pressure, it's almost the same like Bernoulli, so it's not present here. And for the model, uh, it's difficult to compare because we have additional parameter uh, and uh, it's, it can be compared directly. Uh, but here we can see that uh, the points uh, here and here uh, designates the new model and uh, just uh, a solid line without points. It's a, a old style boundary conditions. So uh, we here we see the difference between uh, at the central point of, of the vessel uh, between uh, the solution in a, a single vessel and solution in a uh, vessel with junction point with two models. And uh, here uh, we, uh, we observe the same parameters, but along the length of the vessel. So here in previous slide, we sit at one point and we see dynamics of the parameters. And here we observe the uh, maximum error along the, uh, at any time mo uh, moment uh, along the length of the vessel. So we see that uh, the new model, uh, uh, the error new model is almost the same uh, after the junction, but as a Bernoulli model uh, produce much more error after junction. But if we simulate uh, hundreds of vessels, it may be uh, very important. And uh, the second uh, test case, uh, we consider some, uh, again, single vessel and the vessel which divides in two parts. The first is the same as the, as the input vessel, and the second uh, we have uh, different uh, diameters from the this one and smaller, smaller, and smaller uh, to zero. And uh, we will see how the pressure changes. So the black line here and here is the solution in a single vessel, and uh, different uh, markers means the different uh, cross section oh, uh, here here it's a diam diameter uh, uh, of the uh, side uh, side branch side vessel so we see that if we decrease the diameter so we have solution closer and closer to the uh, solution in single vessel and here we again compare the relative uh, decrease of the cross section and a relative decrease of the uh, linear velocity and the pressure uh, in the vessel. And we observe that it decreases uh, if we decrease uh, the diameter of the side bridge. So uh, this new boundary conditions works well. Uh, <coughs> After that, uh, we uh, move to the next group uh, of the uh, models. Uh, which are lumped with parameters models without uh, uh, without spatial coordinates, and uh, consider the hat as a, a set of several elastic uh, chambers. Uh, they are not spherical; they are rather uh, cylindrical in terms. Uh, they are very similar. Similar. So the model for the hat chamber is very similar to this model of uh, the uh, junction point. It uh, uh, follows from the Navier Stokes equations and then from the 1D model. And they, uh, uh, this 
momentum conservation can be written uh, right, uh, like here. And uh, here we have uh, the uh, parameters uh, before the derivatives, and we see that these parameters depend on the uh, volume. So uh, this new model uh, gives us nonlinear uh, behavior dependent uh, of the volume. And uh, here we have some activation function uh, which uh, describes the uh, electric activity uh, of the heart and constructions of myocardium. And uh, it, it's uh, set uh, like this time uh, function. And uh, interchamber flows, uh, we consider that they obey the poison pressure drop condition, but this uh, parameter alpha here, which is the valve open function. The valve open function equals to one if uh, the hot valve opens and uh, zero if the hot valve uh, is closed. And uh, the mass conservation uh, for each chamber, again, in uh, this dynamic form, because, of course, the volume of the chamber can be changed depending on the inflow and outflow. And um, uh, one more important extension is the movement uh, of the valves. So uh, the valves movement can be described in terms of something like second news law, so second Newton's law uh, in, in this form. Uh, and uh, here we have a pressure difference, and uh, it is connected to the pressure here and pressure here. So uh, this um, uh, equations for the hot chamber uh, volume dynamics and the uh, angles, well, well, angles are connected uh, with each other in a single uh, nonlinear ordinary differential uh, equation. And uh, previously, it was considered the instant uh, open model where we set uh, the well state as the open to closed some uh, predefined time moments. And uh, now it is possible to include uh, dynamics of the uh, wells opening in, in this form. So uh, this uh, set of ordinary differential equation is stiff and uh, some um, third uh, order approximation uh, method uh, based on uh, prolonged uh, extended uh, set uh, of differential equation is used, which works good for this stiff set. And uh, the last uh, portion of the mathematics of the models, uh, it's a lumped model of microcirculation with uh, tumor angiogenesis, but without dynamics. So here we neglect the uh, time derivative, and we only have the well-known for the pressure drop um, condition, but it is important to include um, uh, the uh, non-linear, uh, uh, the uh, non-linear viscosity uh, of the blood, so the blood rheology. And uh, actually, when the flow decreases, so the uh, hydraulic resistance uh, should substantially increase and it described like this function. So this is in, in, inverse to the uh, hydraulic resistance term. And uh, what else here? We should generate this huge network and solve here this non-linear uh, set of equations which are written for every uh, small uh, capillary in, in this network. So if we consider a uh, um, volume of one cubic centimeter, we uh, have to generate about 10 to the fifth, uh, to the fifth, um, so 100,000 uh, uh, vessels network. So it, it, it's not time dependent, but it's, it's non linear algebraic set, but it's very, very huge and non linear. And uh, we generate this uh, network and assign parameters such as lengths and diameters of the uh, capillaries uh, according to the uh, well-known distributions from experiments. So we have some uh, data from micro CT uh, observations in mice, uh, not in human, uh, and uh, we compare this distribution dependent on the uh, frequency of the this, um, so this is the lens, and this is, I'm sorry for the Russian text here, and this is the frequency of uh, the vessel with this lens uh, in the model. And we generate uh, a lot of, uh, I just, if he was here, a, a large number of, of such stochastic models, 
and uh, actually we compare the blood we compute the blood distribution in a, in a several tens of such models and uh, we analyze the statistics and I will show later some uh, some, some results in, in this connection so um, and the second uh, part of my talk is uh, devoted to the applications to the uh, clinical uh, applications and what some results in, of hydrodynamics with uh, cardiovascular pathologies. Um, so first, uh, we can introduce uh, in this model a variable heart rate, because the heart rate uh, had, of course, beats, uh, made beats with different rate, and it substantially um, changed the outflow profile, and it, it is uh, extremely important uh, if we consider the coronary vessels. So the coronary vessels, the terminal parts, are um, um, immersed into the myocardium and they uh, totally contracted at every myocardium uh, contraction. Uh, so uh, it is important what time, uh, what is the length of the systole and what is the length of the diastole. And uh, uh, here the QH is the hot outflow a profile which depends uh, from T and it's actually equals to the flow to the aorta, but also it depends uh, now on the length of the system. And uh, we can uh, compute uh, some additional, so this is stroke volume and uh, this is tau. Uh, okay, so it, it, it uh, computed from uh, the some um, medical literature uh, uh, from medical literature data uh, and um, we, 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 we can uh, also uh, compute this uh, dependency of the length of the system uh, dependent on some uh, uh, Akara Rudi uh, electrophysiological model and uh, so uh, not, not only the uh, heart output depends on the length of the system and also the resistance of the terminal coronary arteries also depends uh, from the length of the system. So every system, this resistance uh, must uh, rise to uh, some big value. So in our case, it's uh, su sufficient the, uh, three, three times than the initial value. So it's completely block uh, the flow and terminal uh, coronary vessels. And then it relaxed according to the systole lens and diastole lens. And um, also we can apply some recursive algorithm for computing the um, resistance of every portion of uh, the terminal coronary network and um, perform this uh, simulation. So, so we can um, play with this uh, duration of the uh, system and uh, consider the different uh, types of uh, heart rate uh, because it's also connected with the heart rate. So first is a, a pacemaker placement. So if we uh, sometimes it, uh, two pacemakers are needed or three pacemakers and uh, due to some regions, they may be desynchronized. Uh, and uh, it is important to understand uh, the, how it affects the coronary flow uh, with different uh, asynchronous in different asynchronous regimes, so it's, it's some kind of uh, is shown here. Uh, the next is the increase or decrease of the heart rate, which is uh, uh, some case of the arrhythmia, and uh, here um, uh, we see that it is very important to consider the uh, variable length of the system. Because if you consider the constant CISL fraction, which is 35% uh, in uh, um, healthy condition, in quiet conditions, and if we use the same value, we will have the wrong result uh, for the coronary flow. So it's substantial. Yeah. And uh, the flow itself uh, to the coronary address with different heart rates can be also evaluated. And actually, it follows from the slide that uh, if we that the tachycardia um, actually uh, have a good uh, positive effect to the coronary vessel. It may be bad for some terminal arteries, but for coronary vessel, it plays um, good because it increases the coronary flow and uh, we have more oxygen inflow to the uh, myocardium. 
the next so the next actually the case where we have the constant uh, system of fraction which is almost 50 percent of the uh cut rate and it called uh this pathology called uh, long qt syndrome uh and uh we can again fix the this uh, lens of the system and consider uh, the uh, flow fraction depending on the heart rate uh, and uh one more uh, application is the premature ventricular contractions i better show uh, the slide which uh, will uh, make uh, clear what is this pathology so actually uh one uh heartbeat uh becomes earlier than it is scheduled by the normal regular heart beating and uh after that uh we have uh two uh, decreased heartbeats and one very small uh, uh portion of, of the um blood uh at this heartbeat and uh, we uh, may observe this case uh, every fourth, every third, every second heartbeat, um, and they called B Gemini, three Gemini, and quadrant Gemini. And if we consider these uh, different Geminis uh, and the different heart rate, we can analyze the decrease of the coronary flow at every of this type of the arrhythmic behavior of, of the heart. Uh, using uh, the model of the um, heart and with the valves, we can analyze uh, the different, uh, so the change of, of the um, prolonged change in the um, parameters of the um, chambers, which are presented here just uh, without a lot of graphs, but just in a concentrated form. So uh, actually the conclusion here is that we have so if you have uh, the aortic regurgitation, so uh, the aortic valve is not uh, totally closed for some reason, and we have backward flow to the uh, ventricle. So uh, actually we have, um, uh, after all the changes, we have the increase uh, of the uh, maximum ventricular volume up to 30%, and we have it uh, every time, every heartbeat, and it, it uh, produce, um, but changes in the uh, vasculature of the myocardium in the prolonged uh, period. And uh, the second uh, case is a mitral, mitral valve stenosis. And uh, here the uh, mitral valve bef between the uh, ventricle and uh, the auricle don't open uh, to the maximum angle. Uh, and uh, uh, we have, uh, after all the changes, we have the decrease in the maximum uh, ventricle volume, but we also have the increase in the auricle volume. So now the auricle uh, have uh, more uh, uh, more pressure and it, it uh, expanded or expanded with the time and it, it also uh, bet in the, some prolonged period. And uh, just a brief uh, illustration for the model of microcirculation with angiogenesis. So angiogenesis is a production of uh, some capillaries along the uh, tumor, uh, around the tumor. And uh, we have this uh, com two combined models of the microcirculation and the tumor growth, which provide us information about uh, how much vessels we should uh, add uh in what region of our uh, micro uh, vascular region and how the uh, average flow changes and we can analyze how the uh, flow changes uh, around the tumor and how it, it changes the inflow of the oxygen and other nutrients to the tumor so here uh, just a comparison with different parameter of uh, the ratio of hydraulic resistances of angiogenic and uh, pre-existing capillaries and uh, it's just a parametric uh, research without some uh, real patient clinical data because they are un unavailable in, in this form. Uh, sorry for this slide, I don't know why it's empty. Uh, but then I uh, will go to the uh, patient-specific prediction of hemodynamics uh, in different, uh, in coronary vessels and in uh, cerebral vessels. So, uh, what is uh, um, our aim and our current developed technology? 
uh, is the uh, utilization of various uh, inputs uh, from patients, let's say MRI, ultrasound data, and maybe some other pulse data, some uh, elasticity-like uh, data information, ECG may be also used to, um, to tune the model. And uh, we can uh, take data from the patient and we can take data from the, some frequent and typical cases, some, some like a lifestyle, like uh, um, sex, age, and other parameters. And perform simulations and provide doctors with uh, some recommendations or, or prognosis or uh, different strategies. And uh, we considered various uh, applied tasks which are shown here. And I, I will show some of them. Uh, first of all, uh, it's a coronary flow and cerebral flow uh, before and after stenotic treatment. So the um, coronary flow uh, simulator and uh, FFR, it's a fractional flow reserve simulator, uh, was embedded into some clinical software uh, as a model with a data segmentation, which was uh, model was done by my colleagues from INM uh, and uh, our. Uh, Hammer dynamic simulator, uh, and we have this uh, user interface, which also uses uh, parameters which come from the patient or maybe from some general uh, patient groups data. Um, here, uh, what, what may what may be uh, interesting here is a vascular stiffness fitting. So we uh, developed a methodology of several uh, product uh, coefficients. Uh, depending on the age, uh, on the uh, chronic diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, and, and lifestyle. So we, we just take them from different literature sources and uh, and make a set of multipliers which uh, modify the initial some general uh, value of vascular stiffness, uh, which is not patient specific at all. And uh, what is a fractional flow reserve? Uh, fractional flow reserve is a, a ratio of the pressure uh, after the stenosis in coronary, in some coronary artery, and before the stenosis, actually, it's almost equal aortic pressure. And uh, these measurements are performed under vasodilatation, so some drug is administered to the blood, uh, and it's uh, open. Uh, uh, makes a maximum hyperemia of, of the vessels and in this condition uh, some doctor measures uh, the pressure ratio before and after stenosis and if we have this value below the 0.75 so surgical treatment uh, is needed basing on the clinical observations but uh, the measurements of this parameter are difficult because we uh, should use some intravascular device uh, which is uh, expensive, which is intravascular, and we should ad we, uh, administer some uh, some drug to the body, and it opens the vessels not only in coronary part but every, everywhere. So uh, it's difficult and uh, possibly dangerous, and uh, we uh, developed a technology uh, which, based on several stage, first of uh, first stage is that. Um, data segmentation, uh, which give us uh, the uh, one-dimensional uh, network basing on the initial uh, patient data. This is a structure is one-dimensional, but it's based the length and diameters uh, based on the uh, actual patient data. So uh, here we have some uh, some stages of the segmentation process. Then we uh, attach uh, this uh, different uh, case B and case C are coming from patient and case A is some general structure. We attach them to some uh, averaged model uh, of the patient and compute this, uh, this parameter. And here we see that in most cases is, uh, we have a rather good accuracy. And here, another study with the same, almost the same model uh, on the 10 patients. It's like a benchmark between several uh, teams from Brazil, from England, from China, and from and our team. And uh, our results are presented here. So we observe a, a very good, uh, a very, very good, very low error 
of the predicted uh, FFR value and actually measured uh, by the intervascular device. And uh, the other uh, rather similar but yet different uh, application is the um, blood flow assessment in the several region uh, after the removing of the stenosis in the cover to tattoos. Again, uh, the data from the patients uh, was segmented and the one dimensional networks was extracted and tuned according to our methodology. And uh, ultrasound measurements are used to, to, to define uh, the velocity, the linear average velocity at the control points. Uh, and we use these velocities uh, and, and here, uh, I think you see them, the uh, dots uh, means the stenosis region in, in every patient here, and maybe here. And we introduce uh, stenosis in the model like some vessel with the decreased diameter. And uh, we fit the parameters so, so that we uh, want to, uh, to to make this uh, graph uh, uh, along this axis. So we, we uh, try to minimize the difference between the measured uh, before surgery velocity and uh, computed uh, velocity. And uh, we identified identify parameters of the model and then uh, we remove stenosis and just compute uh, what uh, velocities we would have after the surgery and compare them with uh, velocities uh, from the patients. And we see we observe uh, quite good uh, correlation uh, between the computed and the measured data. And uh, some other aspects uh, are unavailable in the clinics. Uh, for example, uh, if we consider the different uh, anatomic uh, features of uh, the villus circle, uh, so we will uh, observe uh, uh, quite different uh, hemodynamics in the presence of the stenosis and coronary arteries. So we consider this, uh, and these six uh, cases are um, they, they are not pathological; they are just uh, normal in our population. So uh, we use the same models uh, of the patients and we attach here different models of the circle of willis. And we uh, compare uh, different situations with one stenosis in this artery, one stenosis in this, two stenosis, two, three, three and four, and no stenosis, with no stenosis case. So this, is, this values uh, must be uh, as a reference values and these values are what actually we have if we have 95% uh, stenosis in the appropriate vessels. So uh, we see that if we have the full circle of willis, so uh, only uh, the case with all four um, incoming uh, carotid arteries stenosis uh, provides very bad results. And uh, if we have, say, three stenosis in, in different vessels, it's, it's not so dangerous. But if we consider, uh, I, I will not show all six cases, they are quite similar, they are available, but I will show just for comparison one of them. And if we attach uh, some other uh, circle of willis, so we will see that if you have two stenosis in LVA and RVA, here and here, yes, we also already may have a very bad uh, blood flow in the uh, circle of wheels. And again here. So it, it, it's important, uh, so the structure of wheels is important, but why we uh, perform this uh, simulation? Because uh, the data resolutions, uh, it, it's not always possible to identify the actual structure because the circle of wheels is formed with the very small vessels, which may be not uh, visualized uh, in, in clinics. So, so it's important to uh, maybe overestimate the possible side effects uh, of the stenosis in uh, carotid arteries. Okay, so uh, almost all this research summarized in this book and uh, some other aspects also presented here, but some are not. And uh, uh, this is all for today. Thank you very much. Well, 
thank you very much for a very nice talk. And we have time for questions. I see one hand. Uh, please, if you can hear us, please, you can place your question. Vyacheslav, can you hear us? Okay, I just see one hand from uh, one person, but it seems that maybe some problems of connection. Maybe later. Oh, well, maybe some some else, someone else has a question. May I ask a small question? Yes, uh, thank you very much for, for an interesting talk about the state of art, in fact, in, in, in this science. The, my question is, uh, usually there are some toy models uh, with toy solutions which give some, some useful information. Uh, so in 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 the case, well, in these cases, uh, probably you could mention some of such models. Mm. Toy model. What do you mean? Toy model. I don't know. I mean, I mean uh, some special, important special solutions. For example, uh, of uh, of the models you. Uh, you you use. mean an analytics analytics solution? Yes. 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 Uh, Actually, the, the model uh, we have is very complex, so it's non-linear, and uh, I don't know uh, any, any um, good solution to compare. But uh, we uh, validate uh, this model, of course, by the decrease of the spatial step. Of course, it's a convergence, and uh, also we uh, compare them. Uh, with the physical models of the fluid flow in a network of uh, some uh, um, uh, elastic tubes. So such data available and uh, yeah. all measurements, lens, diameters and properties, uh, elastic properties of the tubes are available and uh, all measurements in, in every point with very details are available. So it's like a benchmark data and uh, many groups in this field uh, compare the numerical solutions with this physical uh, model. And uh, also we have uh, uh, numerous comparisons with uh, clinical observations also. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, maybe I'll ask one question. When you uh, collect your data, do you use uh, two-dimensional situation or you use three-dimensional situation just to collect pressure or something? Uh, so <laughs> if we uh, collect data for the um, spatial reconstruction as from city data, we use uh, this slice-like data in 3D, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the other data, uh, we, we, we use uh, ultrasound measurements in uh, specific points of the vessels. They are not available everywhere uh, because, for example, uh, it is impossible to measure uh, velocity inside uh, the school, uh, mm -hmm. for example, and in the hut also in coronary vessels. But in some vessels, the data is available, but it's like a, a time, uh, just time dependent uh, time series uh, in a, some control points. So they are not uh, 3D and not, not 2D, just a time Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. But you see, this data can be tricky because you can measure it one place, and this also depends not on the situation in this place, but also on the situation of the holes in the whole body. No, so person can be just doing some exercise or something, having some problems at the other side of his body. It can be. It can affect your uh, uh, estimation. Uh, yeah, it uh, depends on application. Uh, so that's and this is uh, this is why we have this advanced uh, hard rhythm model with variable variable uh, CISL, uh because we can simulate some increased heartbeats, for example. Yes, but if we uh, yes, but, but but we just change the heart rate, so uh, we don't care about some actual activity. We, we don't have to simulate it actually. 
but uh, yes uh, I, I understand uh, what can i say uh, if we measure uh, the say velocity of pressure in two points of one vessel they are not very different from each other so it's uh, quite quite good for the model fitting so we, we have to uh, validate our model with some known case in some known uh, uh, situation and in many cases if you can see the clinical not, not score problem for example we also perform simulations for say for runners blood flow in in sport for example and this is different uh, similar but, but uh, have some uh, special uh, features uh, but um, if you consider this clinical application so normally uh, all measurements performed in clinics where the patient plays uh, in the bed or stay in quiet conditions so it's not a problem but what is important and what uh, we can do we, and we did actually uh, we can compute for example fractional flow reserve in uh, some um, exercise condition so if a patient come to the hospital it's he he is in quiet condition and FFR may be normal, but if it comes out from the hospital and runs or have mental stress and some other, so he uh, may have increased heartbeats and FFR actually decreases to some danger, dangerous value. And yes. we can evaluate this, but doctors can't in clinics. Let's see. They have, of course, some bikes, some, but it's not always possible because if they have some I don't know, 80 years old patients, it, it, it's impossible to use bike, for example, before the... Yes, but you, you can evaluate, but you cannot uh, make a conclusion because the doctors who make conclusion, right? Because there are some kind of juridical, uh, juridical uh, ah. issue. And... Of course, yes. So we just uh, make recommendations. <laughs> For doctors, of course, yes. It's more, it's more safe for, for science. Yes, of course, of course. yes. <laughs> yes. At some point, I saw trees at your slides. It makes me think that you may use graphs on your in your theory. There are trees. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe theory of graphs also some somehow involved in this. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the graph theory uh, may be used for some, um, for example, for the pulmonary uh, pulmonary network because it's a tree-like structure with some known parameters and statistics, and also it may be used for a small uh, a, a network with small small vessels. So at the level of the aorta and coronary vessel, we have um, no, not no some self similar property, something like this. But if we, we consider some uh, very very uh, tree like uh, structure such as pulmonary network, so yes, we can um, use some uh, known um, how it's, some network properties to recompute, not to compute the blood flow in every vessel, but to evaluate some general region using some information about its self similarity, for example. Such model exists, yes. We, we, do, we don't use them, but, but, they, but it's possible, yes. I see. Thank you. So, more questions, please. Well, if there are no more questions, then let's thank speaker for a very nice presentation. Thank you. It was our great pleasure to learn about this application, very important application. And so thanks everyone who came to our seminar and see you in two weeks. Thank you and bye.